Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Sammy who grew up with his parents and his elderly grandmother in a small town far from the capital city. One day, Sammy's grandmother became ill, and all the family's efforts to make her well fell short. Finally, there was nothing else to do but pack up the family and take Grandma to the big city where she could receive better treatment at the hospital. She was frail and weak, but they hoped that the right medicine in the hospital would make her strong again. Well, Sammy had never been to the big city before, and even though he was worried about his grandmother, he was excited to get to see life in the big city. And when they arrived, Sammy was amazed at all that he saw. He gazed up at the tall buildings, he watched all the cars speed along the road, and he stood and stared at the vast crowds of people, more people than he'd ever seen. But the most amazing thing of all, was what Sammy found when they reached the hospital. Just inside the reception, right past the front desk, there was a magic metal box. It had shiny silver doors that would open and close by themselves, and over the doors was written the word lift. Sammy didn't know what a lift was, so he decided to watch with great interest. Just then, a very old woman slowly walked up to the shiny metal doors of the magic box. She had no teeth and very gray hair and very wrinkled skin. She walked with a cane and was all bent over. After a minute, the shiny metal doors of the lift opened, and this old woman walked in. The doors closed, and the woman disappeared. Sammy didn't know it, but the lift carried the woman up to the second floor. She got off, and in her place, a very beautiful young lady got in. Her earring matched her lipstick. Her lipstick matched her polish. Her polish matched her handbag. Her handbag matched her belt. Her belt matched her shoes. She was perfect to look at. But Sammy didn't know that. He only knew that an old, weak woman had entered the lift. So he stood watching to see what would happen to the old woman who'd stepped inside the magic metal box. After waiting a few minutes, the shiny metal doors opened again, and instead of the old, weak woman, out came this beautiful young lady. Oh, my! Sammy was shocked. An old, weak woman had gone into the lift, and in her place, a beautiful young lady came out. Sammy thought for a moment, and then he rushed and found his parents. Mommy! Daddy! Come quick! Bring Grandma! There's a magic metal box, and when she goes in, she'll come out young again. Don't you wish change came that easily? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just get inside a shiny metal box and the doors would close and miraculously you were changed into a new you? The fact is we all want to change. We want this year to be better than last year. We all want to improve, to do better, to be better. And if you're a child of God, you want to grow in Christ and become just like Jesus. You want to grow in faith and be closer to God. You want to please him and offer yourself to God as a living sacrifice. But how does that happen? What is the process of change and what does it look like? Well, that's what we're going to discover today in our sermon titled, Give Me Some Change. But before we learn more, let's bow our heads and pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you today that you've called us to be like your son, Jesus. We thank you that you've called us to please you and to live our lives as a living sacrifice. Now come and teach us the process of change. Show us, Lord, from your word what happens as we change to become like you, that we might please you in all our ways. We submit to you now. We bind every voice of the enemy that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I loose the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to enlighten our hearts and minds, and the power to give us grace to obey you. We thank you by faith in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. I want to invite you to take a moment and join your faith with mine as we pray together. Would you just put your hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. Manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, hello, everyone, and God bless you for joining me today. It's fantastic to have you watching and listening as we continue our sermon series titled Living Sacrifice. For the last few weeks, we've been studying the powerful truths found in Romans chapter 12. If you happen to miss any of the previous messages, I encourage you to visit my YouTube channel and catch up on the truth 
we've been learning together. See, I believe that God has great things in store for every one of us this year. I believe that there's a great move of the Holy Spirit at hand and that God is calling us all to new levels of worship and prayer and faith and power and anointing. I'm convinced that the path to the greater things God has for us is through the altar of God. For the truth is you can only experience all that God has for you when you give all that you have to God. You can only experience the highest level of his presence when you lay your life down on his altar. You can only reach the heights of your destiny when you become a living sacrifice for him. And as we lay our lives down on God's altar as living sacrifices, we position ourselves to receive everything that God has for us this year. As we offer ourselves completely to him, he gives himself completely to us. As we aim to please him, we enter into the destiny God has for our lives. But here's the challenge for all of us. In order to please God, we all have to change. We don't automatically please God the way we are. And the truth is, none of us actually know how to please God on our own. There's a way that seems right to man, but that way ends in death. We all have to learn how to please God, and we all have to change in order to please God. So last week, we started that journey. We learned what it means to please God, that every one of us must become just like Jesus. See, Romans chapter 8, 29 tells us plainly that before the world began, God planned that every person who would come to him would be transformed to be like his son, Jesus Christ. God's will and God's destiny for you and for everyone in the church is that we become just like Jesus. You see, Jesus is the perfect example of a living sacrifice. Jesus is the perfect example of how to please God. He always did what his father wanted. And you can please God, and I can please God, and everyone can please God when we become just like Jesus. That's God's plan. It's possible, but it requires us to change. So today, let's continue our journey to a new you in the new year. Our scripture text for today is found once again in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Now receive the word of the Lord. Don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You'll be able to know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to your heart today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Let's take our time together today and break down this powerful verse. Inside this verse, we're going to learn the three truths to help you change in 2021. And here's your first truth today. Change starts with God. Everybody just say that after me. Change starts with God. That's why Romans 12, 2 says, let God change you. And true and lasting change starts with God. True and lasting change doesn't come from a New Year's resolution or willpower alone. To have the type of change that will please God, you need God. But the good news is we serve a God who's in the business of changing people. He's even identified himself with the name that means he changes you. Listen to Exodus 31, 13. In this verse, God says, I am the Lord who makes you holy. And when we look at the original Hebrew language that this verse is translated from, it literally means I am Jehovah M. Kadesh, the God who sanctifies you. So God gave himself a name. God identifies himself as Jehovah M. Kadesh. And that literally means I'm the God who sanctifies you. I'm the God who cleanses you and makes you set apart for sacred use. And I transform you. And all through history, this is what we see in the lives of the people who followed God. Think with me about the great men of faith in the Bible and how God changed them. For example, Abraham came from a place where idolatry was practiced, but God met him and changed him into the father of faith. Moses was a murderer, but God met him at the burning bush and changed him into a holy prophet. Paul was a blasphemer who killed Christians, but God met him on the Damascus road and changed him into an apostle of Jesus Christ. But it's not just great leaders. Everyday, ordinary people are changed when they meet 
Jehovah M. Kadesh. Think about the woman with the alabaster box. Think about the demon-possessed man from Gadarenes. And what about Cornelius, the Roman army officer, and Lydia, the market woman from Philippi? God has changed all types of people from all types of places all through history, and he's still changing lives today. That's the inspiring truth we can learn from the true story of Rene Martinez. Growing up, Rene Martinez had everything going against him in life. From early on, he was plagued by demons. His mother literally sacrificed an animal over him when he was a child. And Rene started seeing demons. They haunted me my whole life, he says. Rene Martinez spent the majority of his childhood in and out of prison, breaking into homes, stealing guns, dealing drugs, and getting into fights. When he was 16, he was locked up for attempted murder. He started a gang called the Latin Syndicate, which eventually grew to 300 gang members. Rene faced death many times. But one night in 2013, while recording some gangsta music, he heard Jesus speak to him. Jesus appeared to him and said, I spared you for such a time as this. Rene repented on the spot. And after he was baptized, his whole life turned around. He now says, when I went in the water, that day shifted my life. I ain't never been the same. Something incredible in my life happened that I can't explain. It was Jesus. Only Jesus can do it. Today, Rene is in ministry preaching the gospel, evangelizing on the streets amongst the same gang members he used to be a part of. What he tells criminals and what he tells drug dealers on the street is what he would tell you today too. He'd say this, no matter what situation you're going through, no matter how hard you think life is, there is a way out. You have a chance to come out of the darkness right now and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what God will do for you. Change starts with God. When you get into his presence, when you get close to God, he will change you. For the truth is, it is impossible to be close to God and remain the same. When you get into God's presence, you're changed to become like him. You see, it's not learning facts about God that will change you. It's not knowing doctrine that will change you. It's when we get into God's divine presence that we are changed. That's what happened to Job. Listen to his words in Job 42, 5 to 6. In the past, I heard about you, but now I've seen you with my own eyes, and I'm ashamed of myself. I'm so sorry as I sit in the dust and ashes. I promise to change my heart and my life. You see, Job had heard about God, but when he met God face to face, it was then that he realized his need to change. That's what happened to the prophet Isaiah. Listen to his words in Isaiah 6, 1 to 5. I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Then I said, it's all over. I'm doomed, for I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I've seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. Isaiah saw the Lord, and he was changed. And that's what will happen to you. For the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 3.18, so all of us who've had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. In other words, when you see the Lord, you will be changed. We become like Him when we meet Him face to face. This is the promise for everyone and anyone. See God and change See God and become like him. Experience his presence and you will experience transformation. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you today. God's part is to impart his nature in us. Our part is to draw near to him. That's why being a living sacrifice always results in change. When you surrender to God, it releases his spirit to transform your life. When you lay your life down on the altar, you get close to God. For the altar is the intersection of the divine and the human. The altar represents the place where God's glory comes down. We are changed most when we are on God's altar. 
And if you will lay your life on the altar this year, you'll be a different person. On the altar, you will connect with God. On the altar, you will be transformed. That's why Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Connect with God and let him change you as you live in his presence, as you live in his altar, as you draw close to him. And that brings us to our second truth today. Change starts inside you. See, first of all, change starts with God. Then secondly, change begins inside of you. That's why Romans 12, 2 continues and says, let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. If you want to please God, you have to do more than make external changes. External changes alone aren't what God is seeking. In order to give God what he really wants, you have to change inside. For the fact is, God looks on the inside, not the outside. He looks at our hearts. That's why 1 Samuel 16, 7 tells us, the Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And hear the word of the Lord to you today. Don't change your appearance, change your attitude. Don't change your image, change your integrity. Don't change externally, change internally. For the fact is, man is looking for better methods, but God is looking for better men. Man wants better means, but God wants better motives. And the problem is, you're looking for the change that will elevate you, while God is looking for the change that will humble you. You're looking for the change that will enrich you, while God is looking for the change that will empty you. That's why all human change starts on the outside, but God's change starts on the inside. So let God change you on the inside. And our text tells us specifically where that begins. It says, let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. In other words, the internal change we need begins with our thoughts. We can only be changed to please God when we accept a new way of thinking. We can only become just like Jesus when we think just like Jesus. That's why 1 Corinthians 4, 6 says it's important to look at things from God's point of view. And if you want a new you in the new year, it will only come about when you start to see things from God's point of view. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you today. You have to see something new to achieve something new. Jesus gave us this principle in John 4, 35. Listen to his words. I'm telling you to open your eyes. Tell your neighbor, open your eyes. Take a good look at what's right in front of you. These fields are ripe. It's harvest time. Consider what Jesus is actually saying to his disciples here. We know he's talking about evangelism and missions, but the principle underneath that command applies to all of us. He first tells them to look, and then he says they will do. See the harvest, then reap the harvest. Jesus knew that the disciples had to see something new in order to achieve something new. And that's how it is for all of us. You have to see something new to do something new. You have to see more than what you currently see in order to do more than you're currently doing. You can't use the same old view and get a different result. And if you limit your life to just what you can see alone, you'll inevitably miss important things, facts and observations that someone else can see that you don't see. That's why Jesus teaches us in Mark 2.22, no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skins would both be lost. New wine calls for new wineskins. In other words, you can't use your old mindset to contain the new things God wants to do in your life this year. You can't use a 2020 point of view to succeed in a 2021 destiny. That's the lesson we can learn from Africa's largest airline, Ethiopian Airlines. When the COVID pandemic hit the world hard last year, the travel industry suffered immediately. With lockdowns and travel restrictions, airlines suffered huge financial losses as international passenger traffic dropped by 90%. And Ethiopian Airlines was no exception. Ethiopian lost 1 billion US dollars at the start of the pandemic and 850 of its employees contacted coronavirus. It could have resulted in the airline going bankrupt or having to stop flying altogether. 
but quick adaptation saved Ethiopian Airlines. Rather than trying to continue with an old mindset, the airline adjusted its thinking and thereby adjusted its conduct. Even though passenger traffic dropped by 90%, the demand for cargo shipment surged during the pandemic. So Ethiopian Airlines repurposed 45 passenger jets in order to build out its cargo fleet. They stripped off the seats from its passenger planes to make way for cargo as demand for air freight surged. The result? Ethiopian Airlines turned things around quickly and made a $44 million profit at the same time. New thinking led to new conduct, and change saved Ethiopian Airlines. That's what God wants to do for you. God wants to open your eyes to see things from his point of view. In fact, listen to what the Bible says in Acts 26, 18. Here God says plainly, he sent Paul into the world and gave his writings to us for this purpose, to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. For you see, when your eyes are open to see God's truth, you can turn from darkness to light. That's a huge change through his word and his spirit. You can change from Satan to God. When you see what God sees, see what God sees and you'll see opportunity. See what God sees and you'll see what can be. See what God sees and you'll see wisdom. And the beautiful truth is this, you can see what God sees. You can see it in his word. That's why Psalm 19, 7 to 11 tells us, the Lord's teachings are perfect. They give strength to his people. The Lord's rules can be trusted. They help even the foolish become wise. That's a great change. Even a fool can become wise through God's word. It continues, the Lord's laws are right. They make people happy. The Lord's commands are good. They show people the right way to live. His teachings are worth more than pure gold. They're sweeter than the best honey dripping from the honeycomb. His teachings warn his servants and good things come to those who obey them. God's word provides everything you need. God's word helps us see the truth and live by it. God's word expresses God's thoughts and helps us change. And that change isn't only internal. When you change internally, you experience external change too. Internal transformation results in external transformation. Verse 11 tells us that good results of having God's truth in us will come to those who obey. So you get his word and get his thinking and then you act on it and obey. So here's the truth you need to put on your keychain and carry along with you. If you'll yield to God in the process, he will ensure your progress. If you'll accept God's thoughts and follow God's ways, you'll experience the good things of God. That's why David taught us to pray in Psalm 119, 18. Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. For when you see what God sees, you will do what God says. When you think like he thinks, it will become easy to obey him. But you have to replace your stinking thinking with God's thoughts. As Romans 12, 2 says, don't change yourself to be like the people of this world. You have to make the choice to let God change you on the inside. And that brings us to our third truth. Change starts with a choice. Listen again to how Romans 12, 2 ends. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. When you let God change you on the inside, you begin to understand that there is a better way to live. And when you accept God's ways, you begin to walk in a new pattern of living. And that's the choice facing every one of us today. As we've just started a new year, we all face the choice to change. God wants to change you, and he's willing to start today. He wants to make you new on the inside in your thinking so that you will experience true transformation but you have to be willing to make the choice to change. You have to understand that God's ways are different than yours and you have to accept his will and his ways. Today, I think we all want things to change. We want COVID to change. We want the pandemic to leave us. We want the world to change. Let there be more peace and love. We want our boss to change. Let him give me a raise. We want our government to change. They should care about the people. But we all need to focus on our own change first. And change is a choice you have to make. For you see, when you change, 
your nation is changed. When you change, the world is changed. When you change, your church is changed. So make the choice to change. Make the choice to get close to God and be changed. Make the choice to replace your bad thoughts with his thoughts. For nothing's going to change until you change. That's why regret and resolve won't change you. Whenever we make mistakes or fall into sin, we often resolve to do better next time. We regret our actions and we determine next time will be different. But here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you today. If you think the way you used to think, you'll do the things you used to do. See, people start over with good intentions, but then history repeats itself because nothing's going to change until you change. That's why Ephesians 4, 22 to 24 says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. In other words, you've got to get rid of the old and embrace the new. You have to separate from sin and stick to Christ. And to do that, you have to let the Spirit renew your thoughts. You have to let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. You have to replace wrong thoughts with right thoughts in order to replace wrong choices with right choices. Once there was a young man who fell in love with a young lady. They seemed like the perfect couple and everyone expected the relationship to progress to marriage. But as the man got to know the lady, he discovered an obstacle to their relationship. You see, this lady owned a cat as a pet. She loved her cat and kept the cat at her flat. But unfortunately, the man was allergic to cats. In fact, every time he went to visit the lady, he was sneezing and coughing after just a few minutes in her home. Finally, the man could take it no longer. Even though he loved the lady and wanted to propose to her, he could not stand being around the cat. So the man gave her an ultimatum. Either the cat goes or I go. If you want to continue to build our relationship, you have to get rid of the cat. Well, the young lady loved her cat and was very fond of keeping her around. But she didn't want to give up the man and her hope of marriage. So even though the cat had been with her for years, and even though she was fond of the cat, the lady made the choice to give the cat away. She got rid of the cat so she could get something better. And so it is for all of us. We all have a choice today, sin or the Savior. You can't have both. For Jesus won't stay in the life that is devoted to sin, and sin can't stay in the life devoted to Jesus. You can't have both. That's why later in Romans 12, the Apostle Paul wrote this in verse 21. Don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with good. You can overcome evil when you replace it with good. You can overcome bad habits when you replace them with good ones. You can overcome bad thoughts when you replace them with good ones. You can make the choice to fill your life with God and there will be no room for evil. If you will be devoted to the practices that produce change, you will be a different person in 2021. Your life will please God and people will see a change in you. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you today. God's grace plus your choice equals change. Just say that after me. God's grace plus my choice equals change. In other words, you can grow and change as fast as you want to. Your level of change this year will equal equal your level of effort. God's grace is always sufficient, so the only variable is you. That's what Paul tells us about his life in 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Listen carefully. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. So here's what you need to understand today. Grace and effort are not opposites. They work hand in hand. Too often today we say grace and effort are opposite. That's not true. The opposite of grace is merit, not effort. Merit means you deserve something, and grace is unmerited favor. Grace doesn't prohibit your effort, though. In fact, grace gives you the strength to make the effort. Your effort 
is your cooperation with God's grace. That's why I say you have to be devoted to the practices that will cause you to change. And that requires a choice. It starts with a choice today to do the simple things you can do. For when you do what you can do now, God will enable you to do tomorrow what you can't do today. So what can you do today to make the choice to change? What step is God asking you to take to align with his word in your thinking and obey him in your actions? Is there something you have at your house you need to get rid of? Is there a relationship you need to end? Is there something you need to return to the rightful owner? Is there an argument you need to settle or a grudge you need to let go of? Is there an old habit you need to break and a new habit you need to form? Ask God to speak to you. Ask him to lead you, for God will guide you. For it is he himself who changes us when we come and meet him face to face. Make the choice today to start the journey to a new you in the new year. Let God transform you inside by changing your thinking. Understand and accept his will so that you can be a living sacrifice that pleases God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the call upon our lives, the call to be saved, the call to love you, the call to worship you, the call to be just like Jesus. We hear your heart cry today that from the beginning of time, your desire was to duplicate Christ in all of your children. Without you, we can't do this. So we come to you today and ask you, Lord, start a change in us. Draw us to you that we will meet you in your presence, that we'll lay our lives on the altar. Show us your glory that we might be transformed as we behold you. Help us to change not just our actions and our outward appearances. Help us to change on the inside. Give us your way of thinking. Let us see your point of view. Let us see something new so we can achieve something new. Transform us inside by changing our thoughts to think just like you think. We make that choice today and we ask you to speak to us. Where do we begin? What is one action you want us to take today to begin to put into practice the process of change? Give us one thought to change. One thing we can do today. Speak to our hearts, Lord. We're listening to you. We surrender to you. We offer our lives to you as a living sacrifice. We thank you by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen.